Now I'm going to open the select board meeting. So I'm calling the meeting to order at 7.05. And the meeting, hearing was closed at 7.05. All right. So do we have any additions to the select board well, meeting? That's the Kyle, you had an addition? Yes. Um, we have a request from a local farmer for a letter of recommendation in a connection with a funding request that they are asking for. I'd like us to consider that. Yeah, the letter of support is what you're talking about. Letter of support, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, so we'll put that in there. And we have the minutes to review from August 21st. I move to approve the minutes. Oh, you move to approve the minutes. I think I motion to approve the minutes. I, I second. Any further discussion? Well, no, that's. <laughs> you can read it now. <laughs> now I can read the minutes. <laughs> You're, you're running the meeting. You can take oh. as long as you want for discussion or silence. Well, no. If no one is going to say anything, then we can move forward. Well, but if people want to discuss the minutes, we have the opportunity. Absolutely. But you can I was happy with the minutes. You you quite, quite happy. Okay, yep. good. As, as, as usual. Uh, oh, as usual. Yes, the minute taker does a good job. It's too bad we're losing her. She can do it the bad way forever. Yeah. yeah, I know. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Uh, the next thing is public comment, I believe. And do we have any public comment? We do not. And the next is consideration of delinquent tax engagement letter. And I imagine that's our usual letter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there are 10 properties which yep. the letter proposes moving forward on the collection of delinquent taxes for. And uh, I, I move to approve the delinquent tax collection engagement letter. I'll second that. And to authorize the chair to sign it. We have a motion, we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Well, okay. Actually, actually, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, go ahead. Uh, let, uh, um, let me amend the motion, if I may. We are actually, um, we, there's no approval of the letter. We're merely authorizing the uh, delinquent tax collector, Michelle Pallas, to sign the letter from the attorney. Yeah. And I'm just going to mention that it looks like the cost be uh, probably slightly more than a thousand dollars per per household or per per property that actually goes to tax sale. For that would include the title search and um, developing all the records and copying and all that sort of thing for the attorney in the attorney's time to do that. Yes, Mr. House. Is that um is that borne by the town or is that tacked on to the? Good question. It, it, it's tacked on to the expenses of the sale. Uh, the problem that happens is if you don't get a bidder for the property, is then the town, number one, has to buy the property because they've got so much money into it. And then you might get stuck with a piece of crap, like a trailer, which is what we were concerned with before. But, and, you know, you will recoup your money on most of the properties because people will pay the taxes plus the penalty plus the expenses. Okay, so the expenses, Before they lose the expenses are borne by the buyer of the property. Yes. In theory, well, even, yeah. if, we're, even if we're the it, buyer of the property, we yeah, I mean, those taxes. Most of the time, the people will pay off their taxes and so the expenses. So I'm just curious. Right. No, no, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. It's just that the properties that we have to bid on, we may have to suck it up. I understand. But, you know, it's the principle. And the, and the worst properties for the town to get would be a landless mobile home. Yes, and that can happen. When, why? No, what, what I don't remember is if uh, the attorney simply issues a formal tax sale, I'm sorry, a 30-day demand letter to each yeah. taxpayer, which is a small fraction of the $1,000 or so exactly. in charge of going all the way to the sale, and the person pays right away, do they have to pay for that 
hundred dollars or so to I think so. Okay. I mean that's my I think that that's, that's probably the the penalties and interest go towards that when you think. Yeah, that that's a good way of looking at it. Oh that's right. You don't think it's yeah. a separate line on I don't on think the bill? so, but I've I'm never not seen sure. that before. Usually they're it's incorporated there's a total cost I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not either. Okay. Um, so if it goes to tax sale, yes, the, uh, the town is not on the hook for it. Mm -hmm. If it stops short of a tax sale, it sounds like we're not quite certain what this happens. Is, but in any case, there's an 8% penalty and then um, right. an interest rate of 1%, 1.5%? 1% one per, per month or something. Yeah. So it's yeah. like 12%. Yeah, 12%. Yeah, those costs may have to maybe absorb. Well, they may have, they have, have to come out of that money that you're taking in. Not come out because of Because they're it. still going to have to pay that. No, 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 I, I understand. But yeah. we still are bored. We are still bearing the cost unless it goes to sale we assume and well happened? sort of but what we're not really because okay. the eight percent penalty and the one percent yeah i know i understand yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I understand. Right. Right. but what happens in many cases like probably two-thirds of people will redeem their property mm -hmm. will pay the taxes and pay the penalty and it won't that won't incur any substantial cost except for maybe the first the hundred dollars for the letter that the attorney okay. writes. right so we're the town the town won't lose any money on that i, I understand but yeah. we but are I mean, still, 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 still paying the expenses mm -hmm. to execute regardless. Right. Yeah, I yeah but I think I you're really the funds are coming from. Yeah, okay. Just yeah. Fired. Yeah. Can I just ask a question? This is Deb. Yeah. Has the delinquent tax pay collector reached out to these people and told them that they are on a select board agenda and that the next step is going to be that they're going to go to tax sale? I mean, you just said two thirds on average are going to pay up as soon as they find out it's gone that serious. Have they been notified by the town that it's going to the level of serious now? They're going to be well, notified. The first thing that's with the letter. The lawyer, in other words. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. well, Gina, okay. Gina, the town. Excuse me, Gina. The town reached out to these taxpayers already, right? They received Every monthly month. statements. Correct. They receive. They receive a statement monthly from the delinquent tax collector. They know they owe the money. Yeah, they're no, notified monthly. So, so every month they get a bill because the interest is assessed every month. So they get a bill for every month. Their taxes plus plus penalty plus interest. Yeah. But we're no longer we're no longer contacting people and trying to work out payment programs with them the way that. Oh yeah. Um, no, we are. Well, I guess it gets to a point where you well, offer you every month. I mean, anyone can pick up the phone and contact a delinquent tax collector to reach out to discuss any options that may be available. But we haven't shut the door on making scheduled payments. No. We, we're still considerate and sensitive to people's need as far as setting up a schedule of payments. We've, we've always done that. It has to go both ways. It does. I mean, they have to help themselves. And you know what? By us not moving forward with the tax sale, we're not helping these folks at all. Because what happens is, unless you're gonna forgive all their taxes, they're gonna end up paying more penalty and interest mm -hmm. the longer they go. And if they can't afford their taxes in the first place, then how are they gonna afford the penalties and interest if it continues to grow? So most of these people are aware, a lot of these people do this every year. Oh yeah. Um, so they, they're fully aware of what the process is. And, they, and many times people, from my own experience in dealing with this in the past, past life, um, People know they owe the money, and they just are waiting for someone to say you have to pay. Oh, there's habitual offenders on there. I can tell you that right now. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's always a few people that might be caught by surprise, but I'm not sure there is on this list. No. Any more questions? Okay. So we're done with the right. tax engagement De letter. Deidre, would you read the motion? Since, see if, yeah, see we if I go. Have a vote. So I don't think, should we need a motion on that? Yeah. Or we just yeah. need her to, to authorize or send a letter. We need to, yeah, will you read the motion so, since I handled yes. it and see what it ended up being? To authorize delinquent tax collector palace to sign the delinquent tax engagement letter from the attorney. Yes. There's also a signature line for the chair on that letter as well. Oh yeah, I okay. scroll down far enough. Thank you, Dana. Yes. So, Michelle, the, Michelle and yeah, yeah, yep. All right, so we have a motion, we have a second, and all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Um, okay. So, the next item on the agenda is consideration of the Housing Foundation Incorporated Mortgage Discharge, Sandy Pines. Now, I've signed this already because it had to be notarized. 
and they couldn't we couldn't do it at the meeting mm -hmm. so i came in today to sign it okay so and now we're going to authorize right. authorize you to sign it okay i move to authorize the select board chair to sign the letter uh, of mortgage discharge uh, regarding the housing foundation loan funded by the revolving loan fund comma which was paid off in September 2022. Some very specific language in the select board annotated agenda for this motion that was provided by the town attorney. Oh, you mean the part in quotes? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Just so, to be sure we don't run into any issues, any issues because, because he will get a, he copy, will get a of copy of this of motion, motion with um, yep. this um, as well. As well. Thank you, Gina. I, there, nobody seconded my original motion, so I withdraw it and uh, now move to approve discharge of the Housing Foundation Inc. mortgage dated March 18th, 1998 and recorded at book 61 pages 497 to 503 of the East Montpelier land records. And Deidre, you can find that in the memo. I'll second that. Okay. We have a second? From Zoe. Yep. Zoe, any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Okay, so we're done with that. Well, there's next. one other item with this, just to note that the next step, and it was just, it was mentioned during the hearing for ARPA, is that this is all connected to the revolving loan fund. And in doing the annual reporting this year, I was told by the state that we, we were long in non-compliance with this because we really haven't been doing anything with this revolving loan fund. So our two options are to either return the fund to the state or the board can choose to assign these funds to downstreet. So it's not necessarily just to clarify some words used during the ARPA. It's not that we're kind of hiring downstreet to manage our revolving loan fund. We are we would be assigning the fund to downstreet. We it would no longer it's no it would no longer be our funds. Um, so your next meeting is next Monday, and I have spoken with Downstreet and have them tentatively scheduled to attend that. Actually, they're they're definitely going to attend, but attend that meeting to speak with you. But in speaking with Cassie Bell at the state, if if the board did not want to transfer the funds or assign the funds to Downstreet, then really there's one other option, which is the funds then go back to the state. Yeah, I remember the discussion last year. Okay. Yeah. Did you say okay. earlier, Gina, that they could be earmarked for East Montpelier projects, even if they become downstreet money? So last, when it was in 2022, when um, Rebecca Schrader spoke with the board about this, I downstreet, I cannot speak to specifically what downstreet can and cannot do. I believe what Rebecca had mentioned, and again, Downstreet will clarify all of this next week, is that they can, for a period of time, target the funds in East Montpelier, Montpelier but certainly at some point, the funds will just go into the overall Downstreet bucket. But again, they will provide that information to us next week. Thank you. Okay. I have an administrative point. When we switched from the hearing to the meeting, I did not stop the recording and restart the recording. So it's all going to be one long continuous recording. And I think at this point, the least bad thing to do is to just keep it that way rather than to start, uh, stop the recording now and restart it. Uh, That's does does okay. everyone agree? Right. I agree. Yeah. It's okay. okay. Gina was nodding. Okay. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I think that we've um, discussed the downstreet option. Uh, so we have a meeting on the 18th? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, somehow we kind of missed that they were one week in between. So, but it okay. kind of worked out with the hearing being tonight. Yep. Which ended up being less involved than I expected it to be. Um, I tried to keep the agenda thin this evening because of that. Mm -hmm. Thin, thin's okay. Yeah. What's that? Thin's okay. Yeah. yeah. A Weight Watchers meeting. Yeah. yeah. Tonight? I guess. Then. Okay. Um, so the next item is the listers, errors, and omissions, which 
I think we were looking for an explanation of that item on our last agenda. Yes. So. It's explained right here, I think, right? Uh, those, that's a email I sent to Gina and she put in your memo, but if you want any more clarification, I came to the meeting to do that. Oh, I'm just. Do you want an overview, it. quick overview, you know it's written down here for the public to hear? Okay. Um, yeah. We mentioned in our original request for the error and emission that um, we needed to change the value by $10,500 yeah. because we had in error omitted 6.46 acres. That happened because a subdivision was done. There were two new lots created. There were three plus acres each and we removed them from the total acreage, but they didn't oh. actually transfer to the new owners until after April 1st. So we should have left them there until the 2024 tax year. So it's not like those 6.64 acres got taxed to somebody else. They were just not getting taxed at all. So we got to put them back on. Okay. Okay. Well, that helps understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Close enough. So I think we have to motion. Have, motion, have a motion on it. The, um, right. The motion yes, and you need to sign it. I need to sign it or we all need to sign it? You have a stack of documents, Seth, in front of you I see requiring yeah. signature, and this actually has signature lines for multiple select board members. Okay. Yep. I'll so find we, it. I see it right so, here. So we approve the errors and emission certificate as provided by the, yeah. the, the town listers um, for 2023. Easier. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll and select for the sign. That, okay, we have so to that, sign all three That's the wording of the motion that, to, to approve the errors and emission certificate as presented so, tonight at tonight's meeting. Well, Very I have to have the number. I mean, right? It's, it's a PVR 4261E. That that's just a copy. That's just a form. the form name. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I said. It, yeah. <laughs> you like my motion? I didn't hear it. <laughs> Are we having a discussion now or what? Where were you? I don't know. I was reading it probably. <laughs> Sorry, so we're having you know why? You did such a good job. No, you no take it. You so, take okay. it. He's a sophomore member. No respect. <laughs> oh, well, you don't act like a sophomore member. He's a freshman <laughs> member, isn't he? I, I would say freshman. Oh, she's a freshman. freshman. Oh. And you're a sophomore. Uh, I think you're a classmate. <laughs> uh, so you made the motion? No, I did not. Carl I guess I did make it. You did. Yeah. Carl made the motion. No. No, I made the motion. <laughs> John, John reiterated my motion. Oh, okay. Okay. In greater detail. So who seconded your motion? It's a shit out of me. Oh, jeez. How about if I second it? Yeah. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> and now we can have, okay. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Now we have to have discussion. Does anybody want to discuss it any further? Oh, I, I, I appreciate the clarification. It was unclear what, why we were being asked to approve yep. an error or a mission last time. Now yep. it's clear, and yep. I'm ready to approve this. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Now everyone has to sign three copies. So I'll make sure we do it before we. Okay. Leave. All right. Okay. Okay. We got the errors of mission done. Consideration of town office cleaning quote. What is the quote? I'm looking. It's there. Um, cleaning checklist. So to sum it up quickly, right now we're paying $100 per week for cleaning services. Um, so we reached out to get another quote as a comparison and just found a company that's out of Montpelier, um, Lamco Cleaning, and their quote came in at $80 per week. Um, Jean, who we met with, with Lamco, came to the office, toured the office. I participated in that. Feel very comfortable with her ability. She, ironically enough, worked for the town way back when. Um, so we're inclined to move forward with this quote. Do we have... Any information on the quality of work that they do at other places? Um, do not, but felt very comfortable with her professionalism. And, yeah. um, you know, I think, you know, I know Chair Gardner has commented to me on the kind of the state of or lack thereof of some of the cleanliness of the office lately. So I think it's worth trying someone else anyway to see what level of service that we receive. 
And yeah. unlike with the current cleaner, um, this person, the current cleaner was not hired with a very clear contract. This person will be, um, and it will have a term on it and include stipulations as well that we can, it's our, it'll be our standard contract that I'm trying to employ with everyone that we hire now. Um, so if we are unhappy, we can make a change whenever we want to. We want to. Nice. That was my question that was just answered by the town administrator. So I would therefore like to make a motion to accept this contract. Um, I believe you are uh, authorizing the town administrator to draft a contract with Lamco Cleaning Services. That's, all and, that's exactly. And accept the quote. Yeah. yeah. yeah we, don't, we don't have to vote on anything, do we? Um, we're, we're authorizing her to draft the contract, or, or do we want to wait until she... Um, I, I, will make, I, I will authorize the town administrator to draft the contract and under these terms, move ahead and sign it and get, yeah. get the uh, stuff on the road. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Cleaning on the road. Okay. So you, made, you made the motion. I'll second it. You second it. Now we have to have discussion. Or we should have discussion. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering what the term you're envisioning of the contract is, Gina? Well, in the past, I mean, I will all probably do a year term on it, but our standard contract with I, which I've received from Jim Par Barlow, same contract we used on the cemetery services as well, always gives us an opportunity to cancel the contract at any time. Um, yeah, okay. The only reason I want to do a year contract is what we've tip what we tip well. Our lawn maintenance services, for example, are on a three-year contract, but in this case, I would like to do just a year. And then, you know, it's something that I'd like to get on a cycle with all vendors that we renew contracts on an annual basis. Uh-huh. Okay, thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Uh, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Okay, town garage project update. I don't really yeah. have much of an update as much as to discuss next step. I know Carl had reached out to VLCT, so I wanted to just have an open dialogue about next steps here. And I just had a question about the wetlands determination. That hasn't happened yet, correct? No, she wasn't happened. going to get us on her schedule until I think in October. So we're... Are we on the schedule? Last I heard, yes. Okay. We're I don't good. have a specific date yet, but... Okay. All right. I do have some information on wetlands um, following up on my questions about the Supreme Court decision about what the EPA is authorized to do and now the new EPA rule that's been proposed. Uh, I had John Groveman, who is the Vermont Natural uh, VNRC, Vermont Natural Resources Council, water um, program, chair, uh, staff member, and a lawyer. I had him on my show, radio show last week and took the opportunity ahead of time to, bless you, to ask him this very question. And he told me uh, that the, not to worry about it, basically, that uh, from an environmentalist's perspective, that the uh, wetland delineation in the state of Vermont is done to Vermont standards, which are separate from the federal standards. So the Supreme Court decision is, is not going to affect that. It, oh. the sta our standards may, Vermont standards may also be more stringent than, than the EPA strand standards in the first place. That's what I understand. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as far as, do you want me to talk about the correspondence with the legal yeah, cities and towns? Please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as, as Gina mentioned, uh, and as we talked about last week, um, you know, I was curious about um, whether we could uh, just go ahead with the town garage administration with our two road commissioners, who are select board chair and our, our town administrator, our road foreman, who's a town employee, plus a member of the energy committee who's shown interest in um, in getting together and, and giving input on this. Would we have to designate the, this collection of people a committee? Um, that means that whenever two of those people are together talking about uh, the town garage issues, then they would have to call a meeting, take minutes, et cetera, et cetera. Want it. Because it, it would be a quarum, right. Just for two? Just just for, if it's a four-person committee, yeah. Yeah, we could... We could commit uh, appoint a fifth person to the committee, I suppose, so that any two could talk, and that fifth person could just be a, a placeholder. Uh, to, so that was the question. That was the question, and um, the VLCT lawyers, town lawyers, 
they always um, try to be very conservative to uh, provide advice to towns that would protect them. And they said, uh, yeah, go ahead and do it with a committee. But on the other hand, when I pushed back and said how difficult it would be, then the response was, it's hard to determine where the line between informal groups taking on tasks and official subcommittees is because no court has interpreted yet. Um, we always take the more conservative approach when guiding our members of gray areas. Uh, I think keeping it to town employees who can randomly solicit input from others would not trigger the open meeting law. So perhaps directing the town administrator to lead the project with specific tasks and then a sense of whose input the select board expects them to solicit would be appropriate. So she also said, I do know many towns commonly appoint a committee that might meet once or twice a month to work on these capital projects. Yeah, but the committee does have to have a warned right. meeting. Right. So what we're doing is we're talking about having <clears throat> informal get-togethers. Right. So if so, it's a gray area. So if we, so what we could do is we could have a committee that would meet. It could even be in um, in connection with our select board meetings, perhaps. Uh, just I don't know. But in any case, we could have a committee uh, if we wanted to, but we could also just appoint Gina to lead the process as a town employee, and then she can confer with whomever she wants in doing that. Right. That's probably that good was enough. kind of my concern, was being okay. stretched too thin trying to do that. That's what I was trying to avoid. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, um, well we have a meeting. road foreman. What, what would you think about appointing yeah, Guthrie it. to do it? Or myself, or whatever. Well, you're not a town. Well, you're not a town employee in the same sense. Oh, right, not in the same sense. Three's probably about as equally thin as I am at this point. Um, so I think this is the this is kind of the problem where we have what, what where we are right now. We have a very limited staff. Mm -hmm. So can we do the garage this project? Is a very large project. Can do we, we do have that? capacity to do the garage project? <laughs> yeah, we do. We just need to get. We have no choice. What's that? We have no choice with the opportunity. To do yeah. Mm -hmm. But that would be. But Gina and Guthrie are out as far as leading the project, mm -hmm. which is. So would a com committee be workable or a good thing? Well, what what I, I mean, I think we need somebody who can work on this on a day to day basis who doesn't wait. Uh, around for the next committee meeting in, in two weeks to give an answer to a contractor. Yeah. Um, right. But maybe... So we only have one, we only have the engineer looking at the wetlands project at the moment. And then we have to work with Kathleen Gent to do right. the RFP. Right. So it isn't like we have multiple entities coming at us here. We but, only have one. But at, at one point we will. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. It is multiple when you consider that the energy committee, I mean, we've already had from we're going to build a metal structure to now potentially wood now. I mean, it, it's 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 not that. cut and dry. So um, one yeah. option would be to hire a project manager that can then my, my main concern is just trying to coordinate and get the answer from this person and get the answer just the just gathering the all the answers and and questions from everybody is going to be very time consuming. So we we don't even have a clearly defined what type of structure we're going to build. So like I said, I I thought we were going to be building a metal structure and that kind of blew up um with now considering. So it, it's when I have spoken with Kathleen Gent, the this lack of scope is even difficult for her to balance. Well, I think a couple of us should meet with Kathleen Jen. If you don't have the time, then you and I can. Yeah, I just, I just want to say that at this point, nobody's given up the idea of building a metal building. No. And we would, what I would suggest that I did look at the, the um, request for proposals that, that uh, Kathleen put together as a draft. Um, it should stay, stay in there that we're looking for people to provide us with guidance on, they should have some background in doing metal buildings and, and hopefully, uh, uh, Wood structures, and let us know which would be more appropriate to construct. Um, and then we have to, of course, we have people who want us to construct a wooden building because it's more maybe more energy efficient, and it doesn't utilize as much natural resources in in, in just constructing it. But on the other hand, they can be damaged quite quickly um, by having constant moisture in it, which is what they get from the 
from right. that. Right. And, and it's a lot more cost, costly to design and actually to build, too, than a metal structure. So, and I know that from, I, that's absolutely true. And um, so I think that needs to be specified in that RFP that we need people that have experience in that and we're gonna be looking for guidance from the architect and the engineering firm to let us know which one they would feel would be the most appropriate to be constructed. But I think that, you know, Gina's mm -hmm. saying she's too busy and that Guthrie is too. I think you and I could meet with Kathleen Gent if, I, if everyone's comfortable with that. And after I think we have- Guthrie and I would be happy to participate in that meeting. It's more of a long-term oversight of this is more of what kind of I'm speaking with or speaking about. It's, you know, with what VLCT yeah. is talking about, someone leading this, you're talking about someone kind of project managing and overseeing this effort. That's not necessarily talking about participating in a meeting, in a meeting. But don't we have to find out if we can even build a building there? I, I think I think we've kicked around the yeah. ideas with the new information from tonight, right. and we don't have to make a decision no. on it. So I'm, I'm satisfied with the discussion. And I just think fun. that uh, at this point, we have to find out if we can even build there. And, and that's the point. Right. That's what we're trying to do with the wetlands determination. Right. And that's the first step. We can't do anything until we decide, until we know that. Yeah. So let's cross the other bridges as we get to them. Right. And I don't think you really need a project manager until you hire on an architect and actually start getting designs and figure out that you're going to build something. Yeah. Um, that's basically what you're saying. But we're yeah. not anywhere near that yet. Yeah. So no. yeah. we could meet as a committee or, or as, an a committee. as an informal group um, while we work on the RFP and getting that out to um, people. and. Anyway, I ha and I have a few more questions about yeah. the RFP, but we, we can discuss that with Kathleen. Well, we can't put the RFP out until we decide we can build a building there. Right. So right. We, can, right. we have to wait for the wetlands. Yeah, but I'm more than willing to meet with Kathleen if, um, you know, Gina's too busy. Yeah, and, and, and the select Kathleen. board will be approving the RFP. It will be a public right. document before it goes right. out. Yeah. Of course. But just to get it yeah. put together. Yeah. Right. I think John's got some great ideas. Mm -hmm. I have a few myself. Mm -hmm. We can meet with her. If Gina's too busy, then we can deal with it. And I, and I felt like the last meeting we had um, where we talked with the Energy Committee folks, um, I felt that um, they came up with, you know, ideas about constructing a more energy efficient building or a building that, you, that had a less impact on, on the environment. But the thing is, they didn't give us any cost analysis between, you know, one might be cost a lot less to build, but might cost a little bit more on the tail end. Another one might cost a lot less or more, and then be let. I don't know. It's just they, I, I suggested to them that if you have want to recommend something to us, then give us the pros and cons. What, and they kind of turned it back to us and said, "Well, you guys should look into that." Well, no, you guys come up with the idea. You're the energy committee. You're the people who have the expertise in that. Some of you are architects, and we've had that background. Do some research. Do some research and let us know. We don't. We haven't given them enough information to ask. We haven't asked them a, bit, a specific question. How big is a building going to be, for example? Well, we have what, it. What, it's in the RFP. Is it? It? Yeah. Well, so they haven't been given the RFP, have they? No. But yeah. the point was, they just asked us a bunch of questions, and when I asked them back, you know, what are the pros and cons of this? They go, well, you need to look into it. Well, I think that we can get. I think that number one step, let's figure out the wetlands thing. Number two step is RFP. We can work on that. Incorporate our ideas and get it out the door. Right. That's my, my yeah. thought. Let, let's get feedback from, from Andy and or the, the Energy Committee on the RFP before we approve we, it. We will. Board. Yeah. We will. But we can we can put that together. Yeah. But Gina's saying she's too busy and so is Guthrie. Mm -hmm. I can reach out to Guthrie to get some actual dimensions together. Yeah. And then we can put that together. Yeah. So I think we can do it. All right. So. Okay. That's the town garage update. Did you have anything else, Gina, on that? Mm -hmm. I think there are some dimensions already in the draft of the RFP, but yeah, the, yeah, I saw those. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure they were, and I, you're saying they are, so that sounds good. Um, so the next item on our agenda is the July 2023 storm damage FEMA update. I see we've got some sheets in here with basically giving you a copy of the damage inventory um, okay. as it stands right now. There are four specific locations that will be um, that will be required or they'll have a site inspection. Um, mm -hmm. 
I don't think the site inspection is going to happen this week. I'm, I'm trying to get some clarity on with the, our FEMA representative about that. I think it will be next week. Um, I'm meeting with our FEMA representative tomorrow um, to kind of dis discuss next steps. But we went, FEMA representative, myself and Guthrie, spent an hour plus going through the damage inventory and discussing all of this last week. I have a question about how to interpret this, I think. Um, if I look at rows C, oh, the, the, those aren't row numbers, uh, row letters. If I look at the horn and the moon items, um, which are in the second, third, sorry, third, fourth, fifth, uh, sixth white row, uh, those are 90 to 95% complete. Um, could you explain what that means? It means they're 90 95% complete. It means the majority of the work has been done. In a lot of these cases, all that is left to complete is the top layer, um, basically finishing off the road. Um, that's I the I got to tell you, I live on Horn of the Moon Road, and I was going to take the opportunity, if if it came up tonight, to ask how much more work is intended to be done on Horn of the Moon, because there are some dicey places still, and one place where the two cars cannot pass each other, you know. And so we were wondering if there was, if it had been intentional, that basically you just made it passable for now, and you're planning to come back and finish it up. Correct. Yeah. And that this is typical in speaking with the FEMA is that that final kind of 10%, that's what that is. It's it's finishing off the top layer of the roads. It's the majority of the damage has kind of been repaired and this is essentially finishing off. And a lot of the delay in some of this is lack of material. Yeah, there's one place where the guardrail was left hanging in midair and now the guardrail is gone. So that still has to be replaced. I don't know if that's- Yeah, the absolutely. Guardrail's another thing in that 10%. I, I've got a question that's sort of on the topic, but um, what I've heard from some other towns are doing with FEMA damage is they hire contractors, but they don't pay them until the FEMA money comes in. I'm hoping that we're not doing that. Uh, we have not hired any contractors. That's what I thought, but I don't think it's a good practice to make contractors wait for their money, no. um, especially if you- I, I don't think Guthrie nor I would be supportive of that that type of right, but I know in an adjacent town is that's every contractor's waiting for money and they're not going to get paid until next week. So you 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 don't get paid until all of these that are at a hundred, yeah. and it can take quite a while to get to the one hundred. Yeah, that there's a lot that still gets done in that in that ten percent. <laughs> oh no, I'm not worried about that one little bit. I understand that completely. I just thought that if we hired any outside contractors, I want to make sure they got paid. Yeah. I don't want to no, absolutely. No, we have not. Making people yeah, wait for yeah. six months to get paid. Yeah, no, crazy. And it's good what will. the heck? And, it's good will. And, right. these, and these contractors are going to go, they're doing other jobs just so they can afford to keep going. And they couldn't even finish the job for the town because the town never paid them. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on right now. So it sounds like we're on a better trajectory. So I'm happy with that. We didn't hire anybody anyway. We're just doing town employees are going to get reimbursed. The town's going to get reimbursed for the yeah, money that we've upfronted for the yeah. what we've done. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. Is. This is normal. Right? This is normal, right? This is normal. But making people wait for the money for six months. No, no, but the ninety percent of the left. Are no, no, I know that. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So is there and any keep other, in mind, uh, with a lot of these percentages, you're also looking at the percent complete is also kind of based on cost as well. How much more do you have yeah. to spend? And when yeah. you've already put a significant amount of material in roads, the material yeah. that is left, including things like guardrails, is not yeah, a, yeah. a significant amount of the of the funds right, yet right. to be spent. I'm not concerned about that. We completed these percentages in discussion with the FEMA representative, with Guthrie walking him through. And in fact, I was yeah. pulling out my phone and the computer and showing him pictures of some of these roads and discussing what yeah. had been done. So a lot of these right. were per percentages were completed based on guidance with our yep. FEMA representative. Well, thank you for doing all that work because I know it's been a tremendous amount of work that was added onto your plate. 
So you know the difference between the B and the C. Category B is the emergency work or temporary fix work, and then C is more of the kind of long term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 pretty, it. it's pretty impressive on on the FEMA crew. Yeah. I I attended the meeting. There's there was it was packed. Really? Yeah. They, they they they're serious. They they document everything and they have a mitigation person. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And two or three people that are field workers. It was. Yeah. I was impressed with FEMA. It's. I just run a government yeah. money looks like it's I mean you have to validate everything yeah, yeah I know were, were they there to validate things only or were they there also to provide technical assistance I think I mean Gina can answer was they, well, they were really well, there answering yeah. questions to provide support FEMA doesn't technically provide any technical assistance from okay. uh how do you repair the road? How do you, I mean, they're they're telling us what we need to have done. And Guthrie's already been, he's in regular communication with Jaron Borg, which is our stream um, alteration engineer that we that works in our area. Guthrie's had him out to a number of these sites already. Um, we just have to start getting all the the data to back up some of this. And we we may have to engage Chase and Chase to actually put the pen to paper. Um, as it relates to meeting some of the requirements from FEMA with the hydrological studies and you know you name it of all of all the roads and and the damage, but um, but yeah, so um, really the the people that were all in attendance, you had the site inspection team, you had some people that were dealing with environmental concerns. Um, it's just kind of all the the pieces and parts and the boxes we will need to be checking through this process. You said the government's not getting ripped off. Good, thank you. And okay. just in terms of, uh, of people getting paid for doing this work for us uh, and the expense warrant that we'll be signing tonight, there's over $20,000 of checks that we're cutting to people who have uh, provided services or, or goods to us in connection yeah. with FEMA work. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that all the contractors were getting paid if we hired many and we have not. Yeah. Um, Luckily have not. Our road crew has yeah. been able to perform this work. I think the only thing we did was we did rent an excavator for a, a period to help support them in the work. But um, and that was all for Horn of the Moon, by the way, Deb. Um, but uh, but that's uh, that's the only thing we have done other than getting material and having our road crew actually performing the work. And, and some of these projects will probably are going to take a while, a while to complete because you're going to have to do hydraulic studies of the rivers and streams and, and have size out box culverts and things like that that need to go in there and then they have to be constructed and put in place. So that's a major Well, it's only be, one. There's only one place one. to the yeah. circle? I think so. That's the only one that's not going to be fixed. Their circle and Sodom Pond will likely yeah. be oh, the most Sodom complicated. Pond. Yeah. Sodom Pond yeah. is going to be complicated because we don't yet know what historical um, mm -hmm. implications may be on that stone culvert. Um, Sodom Pond, or excuse me, Sanders Circle, Jaron has already told us preliminarily, um, he believes that we'll need a 14 foot, I believe, um, arch culvert, um, in that area or for that. And Sanders Circle and Sodom Pond will be two that we will likely hire contractors to perform that work. And we didn't manage to blow up the stone culvert in, in this storm. Probably never will. Center Road held steady. Yeah, probably okay. never will. No. Nope. <laughs> it's a good culvert. <laughs> it works. Keep in mind that Sparrow or that uh, Sodom Pond actually, it is still there. So the culvert is there. It's just the water went all around it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. A lot of bridges like that, too. Okay, so thank you for the FEMA update. Um, there isn't much left. You want to discuss the, oh, how about town administrator report? We have the letter. Yeah, to, yeah I know, yeah. but I want to get the town sure. administrator report out of the way. So, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty short and sweet. Um, there was a curb cut that you all approved at the last meeting that Seth, that's in that stack of stuff that requires signatures. I kind of sticky noted everything, um, put post-it yeah. notes on it to let you know what to do yeah. there, but that curb cut permit just needs to be signed. It was already approved. Um, right. I'm going to give you a zoning update at the next meeting. Um, and then the only other thing I had were the January meeting dates, just to go ahead and get those nailed down. Um, obviously, the first Monday of 
January is January 1st, which I don't know that we want to meet on New Year's Day. So I'm proposing January 8th and January 22nd as dates for those meetings. So um, we don't necessarily have to decide on that tonight. The board can check their schedules and we can go from there, but just wanted to point that out. Or, you know, December 31st instead of January 1st, just get it out of the way ahead of time. Great ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'll be here. <laughs> Um, anything else, Sheena? No, that's it. Since we're meeting next week, like I said, my I expected a, a lengthier hearing for ARPA, so I tried to keep the select board meeting thin. I, I didn't <laughs> Plus, it was yeah. difficult when I'm trying to schedule people like Downstreet. You will be meeting with the funding request study committee next meeting as well. It's difficult to schedule people when we have a hearing um, when I don't know timing right. so yeah so. exactly so. yeah you don't know when we're going to get done yep okay so um that took care of the town administrative report we still have warrants to sign a bunch of other stuff to sign we have the letters of support to look at for annabelle acres yep um so this letter so this is the one this isn't the one that you signed so I can give the background. Okay, um, yeah. So Eric and Olivia Anderson own Anderbell Acres on Horn of the Moon Road and Jacobs Road and uh, not Jacobs, uh, Sanders Circle. And they are applying for a regional economic development grant uh, to expand their farm and offerings to the construction of a new seedling house and workshop space. And they would like a letter of support from the town uh, I was contacted uh, last week by them. Uh, they were putting in their grant application today, and they weren't certain at the time whether uh, they could afford to wait on the letter of support until after we had time to address it at the meeting here. So uh, I offered to uh, work with Seth and get a letter to them today signed by him and me as individuals, not on behalf of the town, but noting that we were select board chair and vice chair, but we're not doing that on, on behalf of the town, and um, told them that we would consider this at the meeting tonight. Uh, so in case it helps their application to get in something tomorrow, signed by the select board on behalf of the town, that uh, we can get it to them. And it simply says uh, that um, signed by Seth Gardner in this draft, uh, we're supporting Ander Bell Acres application. They are active members of the community here through past membership on the local school board, allowing their unused fields to be hayed by a local organic dairy operation and offering the community opportunities to enjoy their land. They have shown a commitment to bring the beauty of their farm, land and flowers to the community through a variety of workshops, sunset picnics and pick your own and we, we support their efforts. So uh, if it's all right with you all, then we'll authorize Seth to, to sign it. Well done. Yeah, so I just made sure that when Carl sent the letter in, the original first letter. The first letter. First letter, that he clarified that he, we weren't doing it on behalf of Slight Board. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just a procedural thing, mm -hmm. and I'm sure everyone would support the letter, but mm -hmm. I want to be clear that we weren't doing it. We shouldn't endorse it um, as, as elected officials. What's that? I agree. No, we no, we, we can, we can endorse, endorse it as elected officials. We can, but it wasn't brought to the whole board. It's, oh, it's not. So yeah, we signed it. We pre-signed it just from us. Yeah. And yeah. I just want to make sure that Carl notified everyone okay. that it was just from us. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we we, but we, this can, we that, cannot as two people speak on behalf of the whole select. Yeah. yeah. So that that was it. So, so uh, does anyone want to look at the to authorize? Seth to sign this one, which this is one. on behalf of the town. So, right. So they're two separate letters, yeah. parallel okay. but separate letters. Exactly. We just want to get something in to help the people out yeah. before the deadline. Yeah. Okay. And, but we want to make sure this was part of the file, yeah. which is supportive of all. Yeah. Good. So, Good. so I didn't make copies of this. Do you, you want, want to see, see this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Zoe, I don't know. If just you, hold it up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Zoe, are you okay with hearing the letter read aloud as I did? Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so I move to authorize the chair to sign the letter of support for Anderbell Acres uh, as drafted on behalf of the select board. And we need a second. I'll second. You will. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Got that out of the way. Um, now we have warrants. And I think that's it. And we have to sign all these things. Okay. So I was just doing that. Now this. Okay. How about the warrants? Let's get this going. On, on the January meeting dates, can we just, by the way, just uh, authorize Gina to add the revised dates, the 8th and the 22nd to our calendar? Just by consensus. Any objections? Okay. No, that's fine with me. I mean, that might work out better. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Do we need to keep everybody on while we sign the warrants? Can we just end the meeting? This is the official one. This is the one I'm supposed to sign. Them them okay. What's that? Like to sign them after. We can let everybody go home. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, that's we true. Close the meeting and let. Yeah, and then, then we can. We have to sign the warrants, and this thing we have to sign this errors and omissions. Yeah, well, what actually? Why don't we leave the meeting open? Because sometimes when people look over the the warrants, they have questions. Oh, what was true. this expenditure for? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm signing them. Now. We sign it. Sure. Yeah, I know we've signed that. But there's a bunch of, it says three places to sign. What? Yeah. I'm only signed. That's what it says right there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sign. <laughs> Poor woman sick. She wants to go to bed. So we can sign anywhere. anywhere tomorrow. I tried, Gina. I was trying to watch your back. Oh, we signed on the back side. Right here. On, my on the back, yeah. <laughs> no, but it doesn't, it doesn't say town clerk. This is signature select board. Oh, right there. Right there. Perfect. Okay. All the person. This is advanced select boarding here. Where do we sign this darn document? <laughs> Three places. That's all I can. That's all I saw. <laughs> this is what happens when the town administrator is not in the room. With that's right. That's true. Even that's though right. she's breathing down our backs right <laughs> over there, even on the television screen. Even though she uh, no comment. clearly comment or clearly noted where to sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and just to hey, let you all know, like if, if, oh, go ahead. If you didn't see it on Front Porch Forum, Michelle, Rosie, and Patricia are all at the town clerk, town treasurer conference for the next couple days. So the front office is actually closed. Um, so obviously, I will be there, and listeners will be there, and the note on the door will state that. You can go to the back door to to get to us, but um, the front door will okay. be will be locked. I hope you're feeling well enough to to come in. I'm I'm kind of glad to be in there alone, so I'll do without a mask. I have not tested yet tonight, but I am as uh, soon as this ends to make sure to check it. I am feeling better, just still not a hundred percent. I want to cheat. Say, I'd like to borrow the copy of uh, the town's copy of Robert's Rules of Order until next meeting. Is that okay with you? No, but remember, there's a also. If I sign the bubble, yes, no. Yep. Thank I could care less. I don't have an ego. Okay, so Where get, is in there remember the um, curb cut has to be signed. Somewhere. I found it. Yep. I think the curb cut. Everything. Did you sign? Oh. The curb cut? Oh, I already signed the curb cut. No, just pass it back to me because I haven't signed it. <laughs> he signed this, so this curb cut thing. Yeah. In three places on the, on the other Kinda one. Kind of like two strong cops. He didn't sign it? He signed I it. haven't signed it yet. But he doesn't want it back. <laughs> you already signed it. I was looking for Seth's thing. Yeah. I haven't signed it. Get it over with. I saw an S over there and I thought maybe Who's on first? <laughs> I'm tired out now. <laughs> it's almost my bedtime. <laughs> this has been my bedtime. Oh, three documents to be signed. Okay, this is one. Uno. Oui, oui. Uno. Oui, oui. Mister. That's French. Yeah. See. <laughs> Do, I <laughs> Do I dare get involved in this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> On the back. Carl has to sign that, and you have to sign that. Deb, this is how they are all the time. I, I, was, I, was gonna say, I feel like they should have to hold up their signature on the E&O so I can see it in the camera before I, before I log yeah. off. <laughs> you are signing the back of the aero emission form, yes? Yes. No. yes. Yeah, we've already signed that. No. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So I'm looking for where to sign this. 
Barlow letter, whatever the hell it is. Sign it right at the closure right here. Yeah. My guest is in the cell's house and we're back in general. Right? <laughs> 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 this is how this country runs. I'm going back in a whole way. Very 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 okay, that's signed. Yeah. What else? This is. Curb cut is signed, but you have to sign this one, Carl. Okay, curb cut one. Okay. Yeah, and I signed that. Somehow we the back. I think we're good. And the warrants I signed. This is original, isn't it? Oh, this is a good copy. This must just be a copy, right? Because we've already signed this. Yeah, there's this is a good copy. Yeah. Before this one. Okay. So three documents to be signed, where yeah. the third? Yeah, but I don't think you could have signed the third one. Oh, okay. That's the one. So, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's the final one. Okay, so okay. This, this one gets paper put together with the other. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Before we then, adjourn, if you sign that one, one question. paper clip it together too. I have one question. What about the eat charger out here? Did we, we were going to do something with that. We never did, right? The what? The charger. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's oh, on me. The, I, I need to contact the electrician again. He hasn't gotten back to me. And I thought there was yeah. some deal we were working out with uh, Watch Electric. Uh, that It's ours. So Yeah, but they were going to do the install or something. No, no. 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 It's, it's up to us. Is that, is that wet or is that green down? That's wet. Oh, that's right. Wet about 30% of it was across the country don't work. Uh, What's that? Wait a minute. What statistic are you talking about? The the um, charger that's charger. out there that they're yeah. not very, very no those don't work well. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's why we we want to charger. replace it with a uh, a dumb one. If they don't work at all. You know, it's funny. I, I've looked at some different places where they've had those chargers. You yeah. can see where people beat on them. I think because they don't work. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. The Tesla ones are way more. Yeah, like yeah. killing it. The Tesla we, ones we can work. talk about that. Work, way back. Actually, we can talk about that after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. We, we no, we can't. That's town business. So. No, it's fine. Yeah. Well, it's this, this, this is fine. other business. <laughs> this is other business. Anyway, I just wanted to know. I, said, yeah. I see the same one over there, nobody using it. Yeah. So just, just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Glad yeah. I don't have an electric car. Yeah. <clears throat> We'd probably be going somewhere else. Yeah, probably sitting at home and charging it. Yeah. Okay, I move we adjourn. You know what? I'll second that. <laughs> now, wait, we have to talk about it. Yeah, let's discuss it for now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> I was in favor, please say hi. All right. All right. All right. All right.